Hello and welcome to Weird Around Illinois. Today we are going to be talking about a recent expedition we went on to look for UFOs. So let's get weird. Now I know in the past I've said that it's hard to actually go out and look for UFOs because they kind of show up randomly wherever, but we had a, an interesting confluence of events here recently. I watched a show, I believe it was called Contact or First Contact. It was about UFOs and it featured these invest, an investigative journalist and a couple of other investigators getting together to look into UFO claims. And they were using this super high powered AI search engine to combine facts and, and find new theories. Now, mind you, this was a few years ago, so you've probably got a more powerful AI search engine on your phone right now. <laughs> At the time, it was really a big deal. And one of the things they came up with was that after an earthquake, you were actually more likely to see a UFO close to the epicenter of that earthquake. And they had all kinds of theories on why that was the case. We may get into some of those later, but I kind of filed that in the back of my mind. And then just recently, there was an earthquake in Northern Illinois. It was in DeKalb County. It was a couple miles northwest of Samanac, and it just so happened to be within driving distance. So we packed up our gear and we drove to Samanok at dusk to see if we might be able to find some UFOs. We drove way out in the boondocks. I mean, it was one of the things I kept harping on to you guys the whole time there, or the whole drive there, was how there's no light pollution out there like we're used to. You'll be able to see the stars more clearly. You'll be able to see airplanes more clearly. It's it's just a different sky than we're used to looking at closer to the city. Yeah, I did find that point kind of cool because you you're, you're right. Uh, when we got there, it was really dark, and uh, what on our way back, then it was way brighter. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird to see. Yeah, you could watch the sky kind of um, kind of fading out on us as we drove closer to home. But what I thought was going to be a challenge turned out not to be a challenge at all. I thought it was going to be hard to find a place to park and look for these things. And full disclosure here, I didn't expect to find anything. I mean, this was another one of those, you know, weird, hey, I saw this on a TV show, we got nothing to do tonight, let's go see what's out there. So my thought was we would drive out to Samanak, or Samanak, yeah, and, and a couple miles northwest of there, drive around a little bit, look at the sky through the windows of the car, probably not find a place to park since it was all independent farms out there, and then come home and, you know, do a podcast about, you know, not finding anything. But... As we're driving around, we see this huge tower. And as we got closer to it, I think we eventually decided it was some sort of a, an emergency notification tower, like for tornado warnings and stuff. But there was an open area around it, an open parking lot. There were no, no trespassing signs or anything. So we just pulled on in and used that as our base of operations. Yeah, and keep in mind, this was on gravel roads, so... <laughs> yeah, it was... It's, um, it's quite out there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We were, we were driving on some gravel, we were passing some pretty remote farms, and there was not much out there. Not a lot of cars passing us, that's for sure. No. Yeah, there were actually a couple of houses nearby that were kind of creeping me out. Mm -hmm. I think I was hearing some ringing noises from there, like maybe some bells. Mm -hmm. I will say that area was really good because it's very elevated yeah so that was like a perfect spot and it gave us an overall great view of everything it really did i mean we couldn't have picked a better spot and yeah you know, i didn't even see it on the map it's like unmarked but it was it, it was very handy i liked it yeah so this right here is exactly the spot they said the earthquake started I think this is as good a place as any. Okay. <laughs> Please don't willfully destroy the antenna. Fair enough. Unless. Unless. Yeah, 
maybe looking all the way down there for a landed UFO. So we get there and we start watching the skies and we see a couple airplanes, we see a bunch of stars. Um, the moon was like three quarters full, quiet night, a little bit windy, not many clouds in the sky. And then somebody saw something. Yeah, that's pretty high for an airplane, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of zigzagging, but it's flashing. Like it's yeah. It is, yeah. I could get that on camera, but I can't. It's right there. Well, it's pretty fast. It's just like fading in and out, too. It's really very fast and very erratic. Yeah. I see it. What the heck? Yeah, it's all green. That one doesn't look as high as the others. No. And that could be a satellite either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I could see flashing from it. That's my only argument. But how can an airplane go that high up? Very, very fast. There was that wiggle again. See that? Yeah. There it goes. Yeah. And then it just disappeared. Wow. Like, th there's not even clouds over there. No. I can't remember, was it me who saw the first one, or was it one of you? I think it was me, because yeah. I know I was closest to it anyway. Yeah, you were definitely closest to it. I couldn't remember which of us saw it first. We kind of saw it close to the same time, but I think you're right. I think you caught it first, yeah. and then I had to kind of search around a bit. But yeah, essentially, the only way I could describe it as is a very small white dot, about the size of a star, you know, from our point of view anyway. But it was moving super quick. To me, it was going in a straight line for a little bit, but then the weird part came in. Mm -hmm. The light was moving at a fast rate, but it was wiggling, according to you and actually both of you. Yeah, yeah, it was like a zigzag wiggle kind of thing that it did every so often. And it was like flashing a light, wasn't it? It wasn't oh. just a constant color. The first one was a constant color. Oh, I think okay. that we, we saw some other ones after it that were doing all kinds of weird things. Yeah, there was one yeah. that was green, I saw white and green overall. Yeah, but the first one, it caught my attention because it wasn't flashing. Because all the airplanes had flashing lights on them. So yeah. to see a constant light, light like that moving across the sky was really odd. And it looked so high. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it, it literally looked like a star moving across the sky. Yeah. Is that an airplane? I don't think it is. And that couldn't be a satellite either. <laughs> See, there's the airplane right there, splashing red and white. Yeah. The other one was just flashing white, though. Yeah. And again, if it's an airplane, it's supposed to flash red. It was going faster than what we could see there, and it was higher up. It's odd. You want to look at the tracker? Yeah. As you can see, there's no airplanes that are that high up. See, it's mainly just little airplanes, and we're facing <laughs> this way right now. Okay. So there's none that were going that way, potentially, because we just saw one go in that direction and then disappear. Yeah, well, most of them were like around here and then going that way, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's there's none that high up, no. Huh. You got three of the ones that we saw were moving at speeds. I don't think I've ever seen an airplane like that. Ooh, yeah. Certainly not at that height. You now my eyes are playing tricks on me. I'm getting little stars doing swirly things. Yeah, that's... That's my only doubt about the wiggles of everything that we see here. But the thing is, we all saw the wiggles at the same time, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Even if it was an illusion, I don't see any airplanes that far up, so... Yeah. I mean, if you stare at the stars long enough, they'll start to move on you. Yeah. But not like that. You know, if you're looking at a plane moving in a straight line, you don't see that wiggle in it. You don't get that same optical illusion because you see 
We saw multiple of them. Um, we were trying to figure out how high a commercial plane would go at one point. According to just Googling it, it was like 42,000 feet. Yeah. And, you know, like a plane that was really high that we saw um, was going like 37,000. Yeah. And those are like rare around the area, from yeah. what I could tell. You know, you've got an app that points out all the air traffic and all the stars and everything else. So we could kind of rule out what we were looking at as not being an airplane and not being a star. But you identified that one plane at 37 or 38,000 feet. And we looked at it and we're like, that's not even close to what we were looking at. Yeah, and with our perception of everything in the sky, it was going slower even though it was closer. Yeah. That was the freaky part about this. You know, we see a light way up in the sky and it's easy to say, okay, it's probably a satellite or something. But it was so fast. It was faster than any plane we were watching and it was doing these fancy maneuvers that a satellite doesn't do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had no ready explanation for it. Me neither. We talked about like the illusion that stars can make. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you look at them, they'll just randomly move even though they're not actually moving around that much. Yes, or, or sometimes even like shine. There was that one near the moon that I saw that I thought was maybe moving and it was like shining. Yeah, like it was like orange. twinkling or something. Yeah, twinkling, that's the right word. Yeah. yeah. But then when we compare that to the things that we saw, those are completely different than those illusions. Yeah. So we basically ruled that out too. Also the way they disappeared. It, it was really kind of freaky. I mean the first one I was ready to rule it out as okay, it flew into a cloud bank. But it never came out of the cloud bank. And none of the others ever came out of the cloud bank either. They would just like fly into this particular area of the sky and just disappear without a trace. Yeah. And so you had an app that could track or like public airplanes, right? Yeah, and the app. And I also had like an app that could track uh, like the stars and everything where they were. And if we wanted to see if like something was a star or something, I could just point the app at it. Yeah. That helped confirm that what we saw wasn't a star. Right. For sure. Yeah, for many of those instances, we didn't see anything and there was nothing near it. Yeah, so we, we were able to rule out commercial airliner and stars. We didn't really completely rule out military aircraft, although your app is supposed to tell you about military aircraft. Yeah, so. I said to have like basically alerts whenever there's a military aircraft around. Um, so, so that the men in black can't sneak up on us when we're on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's probably not for, like, every military, like, airplane or whatever, mm -hmm. but I'd say a good chunk of them, and nothing popped up. I even looked on the tracker to see if there were any that I wasn't alerted about, and there weren't any. Right. Yeah, so that has to be something farther than a military airplane. Yeah, unless they had their trackers off. Yeah, right. Which, you know, begs the question, why are there mili military aircraft flying over northern Illinois with their transponders off? Yeah, then that's just, what is what is the uh, government doing right now? Yeah, it's... I mean, there is a Republican convention going on in Milwaukee, but this is pretty far away from Milwaukee to be flying, uh, <laughs> yeah. flying high-altitude reconnaissance missions. Yeah, well, and it, it's not like it would be an air show either, yeah. that thing. They wouldn't be, like, zigzagging around. They would be on, like specific missions probably or even training yeah well, keep them sorry keep in mind that this is um somewhere between nine what is it like when did we go actually like when did we first go i think we got there about 9 30. yeah so 9 30 and then up until 10 30 or so yeah mm -hmm. and it, it, between that time it, there wouldn't be a some kind of show for airplanes no no i, I guess my thought was that you know, if we were closer to Milwaukee, you could make the argument that maybe these were fighter aircraft just, you know, engaging a defensive perimeter to keep terrorists from crashing airliners into the building or something. But yeah. again, the airliners are flying at 40,000 feet. What's it doing up at, you know, by my estimation, 100,000 feet? I'm really at a loss. It was a little spooky, to be perfectly honest with you, because again, I, I, I was not expecting to find anything. And yeah. it, it's rare for me to go out on one of these missions and not expect to find anything. I'm always hopeful, I'm always, but this was a throwaway. This was a, you know, nothing better to do at night kind of thing. Yeah, you yeah. pitched the idea, like, right after we ate some food, and I was like, all right, I mean, yeah, we, we don't have much to do, let's just do it. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this uh, took it to another level for some reason. 
another thing I wanted to add about what we saw, that kind of reminds me of orbs that people see like in cemeteries and whatnot. Yeah. Um, they're like really little white dots basically. Yeah. Yeah, I have seen videos of orbs actually as UFOs as well. Um, yeah. We already, we all know the idea of uh, big orbs floating around in zigzags and uh, <laughs> fast movements, but they're usually bigger than that. Yeah. That's that's my only question. True, but I remember it was far up there. Yeah, so. yeah, super far up there. Yeah. I was looking for any logical explanation the whole time we were there, so then I started to tell myself, okay, maybe what we're seeing is like a bird or a bat or a bug, and we're just seeing light reflecting off of it. But mm -hmm. And it appears to be further than it is because it's so much smaller than the other objects. But then it went into a cloud bank and came out on the other side of it in one case. And we all saw it from different angles, so that wasn't a bug, that wasn't just a, a play of our imagination. There was something pretty unusual about that. Yeah, yeah. It was... Uh, I am 100% confident that it was really, really high up and really, really fast moving. You know, some of the movement patterns could have been a trick of the eye, but I don't think they were. And the disappearance could have been just going into a thick cloud bank, but it didn't look like the airplanes were going into that thick cloud bank. No. Yeah, and it could have been from glasses, you know? You guys wear glasses, it could be a... Yeah. Like a reflection of some kind. I don't wear glasses. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. I, that's not a reflection of any kind. So again, the orbs we saw are the... the I, I'll call them orbs. I mean, I think that's a pretty apt description that you came up with. Um, the first one was pure white, fast moving, covered pretty much the whole sky, one end to the other, before it disappeared. The next one, I think, was the green one. It was like yeah. a solid green orb. I saw hints of white. I feel like it was kind of behind it somehow, but yeah, it was mostly green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep in mind, these are such faint dots so far away, it's hard to find what it actually is. Yeah. The yeah. exact colors. And then there was a flashing white one. Yeah. And there were a couple others too, and I, I, I want to say the others were mostly just white dots, but it, it just seemed like every few minutes it was like, hey, there's one! Yeah. yeah. Why would NASA be watching something on the, what, 17th? Yeah. 17th of July. <laughs> SpaceX. Yeah, SpaceX would be that kind of company. Well, I think we got a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, may as well head back and go over the footage. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm glad this trip was not a complete and total waste of time. Yeah. I am pleasantly surprised. One of my goofy ass ideas paid off. <laughs> so, you know, we've kind of thrown out there, you know, what what we think it's not. You know, we're kind of dancing around the subject of what it is. I mean, I, I'm not ready to jump out there and say that these are little green men in spaceships, but I think this is the definition of a UAP, an unidentified aerial phenomenon. I guess that brings me back to the question from that TV show. Why do UAPs appear around earthquakes? I mean, we're basically right on the epicenter of that earthquake. It's like a I think a 3.2 or 3.3 on the Richter scale, which isn't a huge earthquake, but pretty big for the Midwest. In the show, they had all kinds of theories. They were talking about, you know, maybe the craft are actually based under the earth, and when an earthquake happens, it opens up a rift and allows them to come out. Maybe they're traveling between dimensions, and the act of emerging from another dimension through a portal causes the earthquake. Maybe they're coming to investigate the earthquake. I, I don't know. I just know that it seemed like a pretty tenuous link that they came up with in that show, but boy, it sure looked true to us. Yeah. yeah. And also, I wonder if what we saw was just a light from the craft up there, or whatever it was. Hmm. And, and I wonder if whatever it was was actually bigger in there. Interesting. So maybe like a invisibility cloak? Yeah, it could be, or it might not be like cloaking at all. It might just be big uh, craft or something like yeah. way high up beyond our vision right or maybe it's owned by the u.s and they're testing out new aircrafts possibly yeah. maybe i guess talking about projected lights i mean I, I think i brought up the idea while we were out there of it being a reflection off of something on the ground um, or even a light from the ground being shined up but we didn't see any like light trail there was no like beam going up there yeah and that that kind of leads to something else that we discussed. 
Could it be a shooting star, a meteorite of some kind that's, you know, going around our atmosphere somehow? Number one, there, as you said, there wasn't a trail. It was just a pure light ball looking thing. Yeah. It was super small. And then a meteor? I don't know. I, I think they leave a trail, but yeah. I haven't done any research, research behind that. Meteors and comets usually do leave a trail. And huh. It's usually, you know, pretty visible, I think. Yeah, that was moving really fast. No trail. Yeah. Well, and the zigzags. I don't think they would zigzag like that. That's true. No, if a comet or meteor zigzags, you've got problems. <laughs> it, it means there's somebody flying that. Yeah. It's confusing. The one thing that we at the time disagreed with or kind of like uh, debated about a little bit was the zigzags or the slight wiggles. Mm -hmm. I think I was the one to argue that um, it could have been our imagination, but it was moving really fast. That's not even an argument, but just the wiggles. The wiggles were slight to me. The first one I felt had really pronounced movements. I mean, I, I, I would stand by that first one having some zigzags in there. The others, I could see why you would think maybe it's a trick of the eye because yes, if you stare at the stars long enough, they start to move on you. Yeah. But here's the interesting thing. If you stare at an airplane, it doesn't. If an airplane no. is moving across the sky and you're tracking that movement, it looks like a straight movement. Yeah, and that might be because of the blinking lights, that'll keep you focused on it rather than like drifting off a little bit. Well, one of these things was blinking too, though. Mm, but yeah, that's true. Very weird. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess the other question I have now is, were these lights there, or these ships, or these whatever they were there, because of the earthquake? Were they just always out there? Yeah, they seemed pretty common, actually, at the time, so I, I don't know what the reason behind it is. I really don't. Maybe we need to take another trip out there sometime when there's not an earthquake and watch the sky for about half an hour and see if these things are still there. Good idea. All right. Well, that was our very odd experience this week, and um, I, I will call it a, U, a UAP encounter. And uh, if any of you have had encounters with uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon or unidentified flying objects or anything of that sort, we would love to hear about it. And if any of you happen to be astrophysicists who can help to explain away what, what we encountered, and hopefully we'll even have some video for you. I'm not sure if any of it turned out, but it'll be on this podcast if, if, if there's anything to see. By all means. Tell us, tell us what we're missing, because I would love to file this one away in my mind as solved, rather than staying awake at night thinking, what the heck were we just looking at? <laughs> as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing.